The game is changing. My job is to ensure the stability of UBA. Alex, I need you to come back. You are the only thing that can save us. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that before. I'm not gonna get edged out. Alex Levy. I feel like I'm bringing in my big sister to clean up my mess. I mean, you couldn't have planned this any better. Stepping away when you did. I was broken, Doug. Yeah. Ratings have been down. This network needs to clean up its act. Five. I'm trying to get ahead of this coronavirus thing. Four. Someone should cover it. Well, Bradley can do it. Three. Don't forget, this is your show. And we're back. Two. I know I come with a history that not all of you love. One. Nine months ago, you opened a door, and you need to walk through it now. A bombshell from journalist Maggie Brenner's upcoming expose on the behind-the-scenes troubles at UBA's The Morning Show. There is a pattern of behavior around here that disadvantages the people of color. We need to get our facts straight. We need to decide what the truth is. Did you hear what you just said? Maggie, I would like to see the book. You don't like me, you've never liked me. That's not true. Which part? Onward and upward. You are a dynamo out there. I don't think they're using you in the right way. I don't trust her. She seems perfectly nice. Oh, God, she bugs me. I'm your boss. I'm gonna make sure it works out. Oh, you're my boss. I thought you were my friend. I'm on your side. The network doesn't think you have the it factor. We're looking to showcase some of their talent. You know what the problem with racism is? You don't fix it by pretending to want to fix it. What I want is to change things, because the jury's still out if you were successful. Happy days are here again. In case you forgot, I'm the whistleblower. I'm gonna get everything I want. You're just so caught up in ruling over your rotten little fiefdom. The rest of the world, they've moved to the cloud, and it is gorgeous up there. This is a battle for the soul of the universe. So happy to so happy to Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today, we are absolutely thrilled to be talking to two of the talented actresses who stars on Apple's uh, hot series, The Morning Show. We're going to kick things off by introducing you to the African members who are taking part in our roundtable today, beginning with our facilitator, Katia Woods from Philadelphia, but in New York today. Carolyn Hines in Toronto, Reginald Pounder in Chicago, Janita Davis in Indiana, Jill Monroe in LA, uh, Niger, Niger, I don't know what market you live in. Washington, DC. In the chocolate city, Washington, mm -hmm. DC. Ty Cole, also in New York, Karan Lenoir in Virginia, Dana Abercrombie in New York, and we are going to get started. So I'm gonna get off and let you guys do what you do so well. I'll see you on the other side. Hello, Karen and Greta. This is Ty Cole with Your Voice Media. You both did an amazing job. So my question for you is this. Now the shore explored so many tough conversations, okay? Especially with the growth in the workplace. Specifically in episode four, Mia, you fought for Daniel to moderate a big panel and was hit with Stella telling her that Daniel doesn't have the it factor per se. Now, with all that being said, do you feel the storylines for this season was a way to set up the change that we can possibly see with more people of color within that universe take the lead? And how can we progress moving forward? So we'll start with you, Greta. That is a conversation that we had frequently on set while we were working. And I was so grateful. It was immediately apparent that I had found like a very incredible ally in Karen um, and Deshaun as well. And just having that was enormously, uh, it was just comforting and to have that support while we were navigating these questions, this question that you just asked about how do we, um, push for and advocate um, authentic stories uh, for specifically the people of color on this show and this type of show and fully acknowledging the infrastructure that we're stepping into. And I was new this season too. Um, and 
that was an ongoing process for us while we were shooting. I mean, truly, every time we saw each other on set, those were conversations we, we'd have very open and honest uh, questions that we were having both for our individual characters, for each other's characters, and asking basically within a limited amount of real estate, because it is an ensemble show, what can we do to put our best feet forward in terms of how we represent ourselves and what the narrative is gonna be for our characters. Um, basically, we didn't know the answer and we still don't. And it's something that's very much in flux um, and it is an open dialogue, which is part of the reason I'm so happy to be here with you guys, with y'all to talk about this because we need help. Like we, that this is something, it's like a living, breathing issue that uh, is not resolved. It is the truth of it. And I also think, uh, to Greta's point, we definitely did try to link up arms with each other and have these conversations frequently amongst each other's and sort of present um, a creative coalition to the writer's room and to the producers and say, hey, this is the energy or this is the conversation or this is part of what feels authentic to me and my character and how they would navigate this and what's your idea and um you know it was not an easy conversation to have consistently i think as an artist you're uh not just dealing with your own set of um circumstances about how far you want to push into that conversation that collaboration but for me as a human being coming into the conversation uh after having you know witnessed everything that we saw months before with george floyd and ahmaud arbery i came into the creative process with a good deal of rage like i was actually like the hell is wrong with this country and trying to use all of that emotion and those feelings constructively in uh, a dialogue with writers and with the producers and with my cast members and um so i think what you i'm hoping what you saw in the morning show season two was our desire to nuance that conversation amidst people of color what that may look like in a corporate environment um i do think that race and race politics is cumbersome because race itself is kind of an absurd uh, concept. Um, so I think part of my idea was let's look at it from the function of what does systemic racism and how do we navigate our way through it as Mia Jordan and as Stella Bach and uh, uh, amidst all of these um, pressures and difficulties that we experience. Thank you both so much for your answer. I think this is a show that every journalist should watch. And thank you so much for bringing these stories to life. Everybody, Kathy of Woods, Cup of Soul show. Um, I, I'm gonna piggyback off of, of, of Ty's question is, and it's nice to see the character of color speaking about some of the inequities in the show and, and, and how they, you know, how their characters, I love how um, Karen, your character is like, you know, you're trying to navigate, you know, and, and helping your, your fellow journalists, but at the same time, you want to protect your situation. How much say did you have in the development of your character and just, you know, showing that, you know, she is in a precarious position, just like a lot of people of color are when you are climbing up the ladder, you want to help your fellow people, but at the same time, you don't want to jeopardize your position. That part back. You know, you know yeah, I, I did have some influence on it in the conversation. Um, it was, I was invited into it with the showrunner, Carrie Aaron. Um, she uh, was, a, was an ally and an advocate for trying to be as authentic and truthful with storytelling with women of color on the show. I think Stella would agree with that. Um, uh, you know, for me, it, there wasn't, you know, my my perspective on human beings is that they don't, especially women and Black women in these situations, they don't operate on the sense of fear. They operate in the uh, 
landscape of how do I get this done? Do you know what I mean about that? That is very specific, a specific cultural experience of black women. Like we're not trying to navigate through the fear conversation. We're just like, let's get this done. Let's make a way out of no way. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that was, I was able to navigate that in the relationships that Mia has with Daniel Henderson, uh, with Stella Bach. I think you saw her go off in a very emotional way with Mark Duplass's Chip Black and all of those moments, um, I think are, you know, I think you best see women under pressure navigating that, the emotional aspect of it in relationship, not necessarily in the arc of what is she fighting against, but in the, in the relationship of, hey, you know, we're in this together. How do we figure this out? Help me out. And seeing her response to those relationships. Um, no, does that make sense, Greta? Did you? Yeah. That? Well, I, I just want to add that, you know, I, I want to lift you up, Karen, and being able to just bearing witness to your trajectory and your journey this season. And I mean, it takes a tremendous amount of courage to show vulnerability as a black woman, as, as a woman of color, but I think specifically given the climate and what was happening in the world, I just cannot express the ex full extent of my appreciation and, and awe of what you did given their circumstances to just show up every day. I mean, we talked about that. Like, do people, people, half of our cast, they don't know like, of just the amount of, of, of courage to just come to work every day and to step in to this world um, and, you know, and to be tasked with, it's a responsibility that none of us were taking lightly, especially the women of color, you know, I would argue, um, to, uh, bring to life these characters and the responsibility knowing that it's not enough just to show up and just to have an Asian character or just to have finally a black producer it's not enough and yeah. the courage it takes in, in watching you Karen bring so much of yourself and your depth that's something that the writers can't write unfortunately I mean they can to a certain extent but right. to bring that humanity to that person, I think that is something, that's everything. That's what makes, makes, makes it. Thank um, you, Greta. Greta knows, this is the first time I've seen Greta since we were on set together and she knows how, what a challenge it, God, I can't believe I'm getting emotional. Okay. Yeah. Don't do the makeup, <laughs> come on. <laughs> now I do have to go over there and start dabbing your eyes. It was so, it was such a challenge and Greta knows that, that we were in the trenches together. We really were just trying to figure it out and support. And it was, listen, it was a pandemic. There was a lot of social unrest. Like it was, a, it was a real trick coming back into this season and yeah. jumping in with everything we had. Yeah. There was no pretending that the world hadn't changed. And then to go back to work within this environment how we were constantly asking ourselves, I mean, you know, and it, 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 that constant workout too, that people, that people of color go through, but it was just heightened even more so because of COVID, because of what happened with Black Lives Matter, this sea change that was so, um, I mean, with anti-Asian hate crimes, all of it. And it, none of it made sense. It, and all of that, we tried to, in some way, in our small way, in whatever way we could honor these things that were happening and tried to like hold our colleagues responsible. Yeah, uh, and, and to really be constructive in yeah. conversation um, on set and with these creatives and with these collaborators and on this platform, this huge platform that we were afforded to tell a story for me, and I also think this is true for, for Deshaun and for Greta, it was very important that we take the opportunity and do the very best we could. Do you know what I mean? Like take it to the highest level that we could. So every moment that we were together and on set, it was about, you know, just don't fall down. Let's keep moving. Let's keep to going to the next level. It, you know, you, you could get down on yourself in those situations, but to continue to try to strive 
for the best that you had for excellence, right? That, that was really, that was the trick. Thank you so much. Thanks, Greta. Hi, Karen, for, <laughs> for Karen Talks for the So Here's What Happened podcast. And my question is uh, for both Greta and Karen. Um, so you both just talked about um, uplifting each other and helping support each other throughout the um, filming. But I think what you were saying actually kind of plays into my question because it, it there's what happened, what was happening in real life is kind of reflected on the show where both characters are in very extremely par powerful positions in this news corporation. For Stella, she's a president of this network. And for um, Mia, she's a producer. And you're both having to stay in control at all times while you while you want to break down, while you have to take these small moments for yourself. And deep, and either, like for Mia, she has a scene where she cries in her office and she expresses everything that's going on with Mitchell. And like for, for these two women, like it's hard to watch women in positions, especially women of color, we have to be strong all the time, but knowing that you have, you want to let go and then to have that play into what's going on in real life. Like how did both of you cope with the, I guess you could say the mirror, the mirroring of what was happening in real life, happening on set and happening in the scripts. Like how did you, how were you able to like, just push through, just like being able to like say, I have these two situations like coinciding at the same time. A lot of wine after work. <laughs> you know, I think what I benefited from, I will say, what I benefited from was, you know, I had an entire season of creating the emotional landscape for Mia Jordan, what she had been dealing with emotionally with the, with having left the relationship with Mitch Kessler. Um, they gave me a lot of room, the writers and the producers gave me a lot of room to create whatever landscape Mia uh, fell into after that workplace relationship ended. So when I, I started uh, season one and she had been promoted to executive producer, I had all of that behind me and could focus on what it looks like for a woman of color to be empowered, uh, but also to be empowered at a moment of enormous transition for this news program and trying to balance all of the personalities. When I came up to episode eight and uh, we had that moment with you were talking about when she has that monologue, it was a moment that Carrie Aaron, who's a showrunner and I talked about, about exposing finally Mia's extraordinary fragility, what she's uh, got underneath all of the surface of having to keep it together. So it was really just um, an exercise in letting it kind of ooze out as an actor and not letting it all fall out as I did in season one and episode seven, where she just lets everybody have it. You know, this was really about um, a quiet moment of uh, grief. Um, yeah. She was just grief stricken over what had happened. And quite honestly, that was very easy to tap into. I mean, in, in my own personal life, I've experienced a lot of grief in the moment on set, we were all trying to figure out emotionally, as we've talked about as a cast and as actors, we were all trying to figure out where we were in this big sea change um, of uh, socio-political drama that was playing out in front of our eyes every night when we went home. Mm -hmm. um, we were isolated because of the pandemic, you know, so it was actually, um, it wasn't hard to tap into those emotions. They were right on the surface. And as an actor, you try to keep them there all the time. So, um, so I think to answer your question, it was built into the character over time. It was a great opportunity to let it kind of spill out so that the audience would, would see what Mia was going through, had a great director in Vic Mahoney. Um, you know, it, it, was, uh, it was difficult, but it was all of that was working to the benefit of the character. I'm so glad that, and, and first of all, that that scene was so exquisitely performed, Karen. I mean, I really, I haven't been able to tell you enough just how beautiful that that performance was. But I think that those, I'm so glad it's, I think we often have, this is, you know, the tax that we have as non-white creatives. It's the added burden that we have that, you know, we have to wear our, our race, our otherness as a coat in a way our colleagues, other colleagues simply just don't have to. And this question that we're constantly asking ourselves and working through is how it's that balance 
how do we bring humanity into the roles that we play? So it's not just, you know, I'm a figurehead for Asian Americans or Karen is, you know, a, a model for a black woman in power because it's just not enough. And I think that's something that we could continue to emphatically express to the producers and to the writers. And we're lucky that they could hear us and we're receptive to that, that it's not enough simply to put up these like uh, emblems of, like, uh, of, of prototypes. You have to have scenes like the scene Karen had in episode eight, where you are showing depth and, and humanity that isn't just, I'm a strong black woman, right? Um, but it, it, it is a balance, right? It's how do we, within our roles as actors, that's the other thing, Karen and I, we joke all the time, we're just actors. Yeah. And sometimes, it, you know, our, our job, it's like a pirate ship. And there's a clear system, a, a ranking order of power. And that's also a, a, a part of this for us. How do you advocate? How do you have input within the confines of the structure too? Great, thank you so much. And you both did a fantastic job with this season. Hi, I'm Jenny De Davis with the, the Black Cape. Um, my question for both of you is um, how, you, you've done a lot of work and a lot of, there seems to be a, a, an immense mental, um, change um, that's gone into you know the show and, and you know with dealing with a pandemic and and just working through all of it um and you put together a great show and a great performance has it changed you and the way you look at your craft and look at some of the roles that you are going for you know going for moving forward has, has have you thought of you know how you're going to approach your career is, is differently after you know doing the show at this time in these circumstances and having to advocate as you have we me and greta had this conversation actually um uh you know we need more power <laughs> we need more power so, the president <laughs> and i'll be your veep <laughs> and, you know, and i'm announcing my my candidacy for no i'm not um i think uh I think, yeah, it definitely changed me. It definitely made me feel like uh, not only is it uh, important and proper to advocate for those folks around me, actors and cast members and uh, who um, have ideas and have stories to tell. Um, it made me understand that if you are going to be uh, collaborating with uh, people who are different from you, that it's important for you to first seek out common ground and secondly, to be really honest and lift your voice up and be very frank about and candid about where you think uh, your influence in the, uh, in the storytelling should be. And I think that I felt like as an actor, I should lean back a little bit and let the imagination of the writers uh, take the forefront. But I realize now there are very specific situations where I have to speak up, where I should speak up, um, and that um, my voice is important in the process, um, that my silence actually doesn't benefit me or any of the people around me or even the story. It's very important now for me to, to make sure that I'm heard. Uh, and if that makes me unlikable, that's okay. I don't, I don't need to be liked as, as much as I, I think I need to be, right? So yeah, it, it definitely changed. It's a great question, Jenny. It definitely made me think about myself as an actor in a different way and expand my idea of who I need to be, not just for myself, but for the people around me and for the story that we tell. I love that, Karen. Yeah, well put. I mean, I, I similarly feel absolutely that this experience has changed me. Um, I think that there's this cynical idea often in this business with all the different things that we make of it's all focused on the product of like, okay, what's, how's this going to turn out? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be well-received? Are the right people going to enjoy it? You know, are we going to get another season? And we lose sight as kind of cheesy as it sounds of the process. And I think doing this was really a, just a huge reminder that 
the making of how you make it with whom it, it really matters. It all matters. It bleeds into the work, the, the experience at holding each other accountable. It all, it matters. It really does. It matters more than ever. And it has made me feel that, you know, for future projects and, and for this show too, I look forward to us all coming back together again and continuing that and improving on that and how we hold each other accountable. What, you know, asking these really uncomfortable questions um, that seemingly don't have answers. And, you know, Karen, you bring up just the challenge for us to raise your hand and to say, hold on, Stella wouldn't talk like that. Or, you know, I, that doesn't make any sense. Or, you know, Stella and Mia wouldn't converse like that. And, and historically, unfortunately, because of systems of white supremacy and bias, you're not always received when you speak up, but constantly, I mean, it's like toning a muscle and reminding each other, ra raise your hand. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna suck sometimes. And it's gonna feel really exposing um, to kind of stand up uh, in sometimes white rooms, predominantly white rooms, but to just like hold hands and to do that. It, this show and this experience has really, yeah, inspired me and, and made me feel like we can, let's, let's keep this going. I think that um, that moment in episode four where Daniel sings his, you know, his pain and his, uh, is a perfect example of this. When I first read the script for that episode, um, at that point, it, you know, there's through the going through the process of editing and developing. When I first read it, there was no moment where Mia uh, had a response to seeing, first of all, someone take over the show, and secondly, seeing her fellow African American colleague, you know, singing his heart out over something. And yeah, I, I remember that, Karen. You're like this i gotta say something here i would say the sister would stand up and what the you yeah. know <laughs> so that moment where mia says uh what the fuck was that bojangles is was born out of that conversation that I, yeah and all the sisters are laughing because we are we were all like wait what's happening because it was definitely that moment i said listen carrie I, there's no woman of color that would look at that and not first of all feel ah to you know that the ache of yeah. of uh, the the sadness the anguish of seeing uh someone another person of color going through that but also is it you know uh, is that minstrelsy? Is that is that what we're proposing for this show? Is that what we're doing? And if it's not, can we speak to it? Can can Mia say something after the show is after the the thing is done after the event is done? And you know, she was like, yeah, yeah. She was like, that's that's kind of ballsy. I was like, actually, that's just you know, what black women would do in that, you know what I mean? So that, um, so that's where that actual moment was, the Bojangles moment was born from that conversation. Um, again, lifting your voice up, raising your hand saying, hey, I, I, I have an idea here, what do you think? And yeah. um, I mean, again, that's exactly, yeah. I mean, can we all appreciate and imagine the courage it takes I mean, to care, imagine Karen raising her hand and literally asking, hey, wait a minute, is that like minstrelsy? Right. Like, can you even yeah. imagine? <laughs> that takes yeah. an incredible amount of boldness um, to just to state that, you know? And thank God you did. And I, and I will say that Carrie was like, <gasps> Do you sure. know? <laughs> she was like, wait, is it? Do you know? Because, but, I, you know, part of that courage was created from having witnessed months of people lifting up their voices and linking arms yeah. up and seeing right. videos. And it was like, you know, if we can't do it together, we it's not going to get done. So, hey, let exactly. me say, you know what I mean? Like, hey, how could oh, we not speak up during this time? Yeah. How could we not? have to yeah thank you that's great life advice right there too i love it thanks <laughs> hello Nadja chambers here of uh big old belt media um my question is for the two of you all 
Um, so, you know, the main focus of this show and the plot is basically uh, premised around the allegations of sexual assault and harassment, but also has very important and heavy other uh, subplots and themes, including sexism, racism, toxic, and the toxic culture in the workplace. Um, I think on the other side of the coin here, we have to discuss recovery and empathy. So I wanted to know, um, what was the type of methods of decompression and therapy amongst the entire cast to kind of detach from these characters to still, you know, almost survive in society today? I mean, we, we're lucky in that our colleagues were very interested and invested in, in talking to us and engaging with us about what was happening in the world around us. Um, I mean, specifically, not just about COVID, but specifically about race. Um, so I, I think that, and remember it was COVID. So we were trapped together and not seeing anybody else during this time when we, we were so incredibly unsure. I mean, I mean, honestly, we were like, is there a point in making this TV show right now? I mean, that was an actual question while the world felt like it was in a very shaky place. Um, and that was really bonding for us and just try to find the humor in the situation of, you know, there's a global pandemic. We're uh, in a fake restaurant set, you know, sitting next to each other, having not seen anyone else outside of, you know, the core group and just, you know, how absurd, the absurdity of the situation. I mean, it's good to laugh. And also I will say that, you you know, putting political and social justice issues and questions and discussions aside, just the caliber of craft um, with this group, being able to, I mean, that was our connecting point, I, I would say. Like, it didn't matter like what you thought about certain political issues. The fact that this group of, of actors, like, I mean, truly nerds, like theater acting nerds coming together and trading, I mean, truly like trading tips, like looking over at Billy with his like iPad and his, you know, his system there, all the like videos that he's got and, and, and yeah, everyone having their own mechanisms and just being able to like be at like theater camp was so, was so healing. Like in this time when we were like, what is happening? Well, at least we can we can focus on whatever we what what was right there in front of us, which is how do we make these scenes better? How do we show up for each other? You know, not just as like an Asian woman, but just like as a human who's an actor and be in the moment and be honest and to like hold each other and lift each other up. I mean, I think that was our, that was the sort of only way we could kind of try to decompress or distract ourselves from what felt so scary at the time. And remember, there's also an election happening. Oh my God, Karen, do you remember yeah. us trying to work while trying not to look at Twitter? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I think I, to your point about, I, I can't emphasize enough the uh, COVID of it all. I think that so many of our scenes are storytelling the physical aspects of how we built our characters and our characters relationship was affected uh, by by the pandemic. I mean, uh, we were sh filming season two when there was no vaccine, right? The idea of getting the vaccine actually did, was getting there, but we didn't actually get it until March of 2020, April of, or, uh, March of 2021, April of 2021. And we started filming in October of 2020. So we were really dependent upon each other for, companionship and, you know, our ways of unraveling our characters and um, trying to um, pull together an emotional landscape that did not, wasn't, uh, that was true and real and authentic. And I recall after having done a scene in episode six with Rachel Morrison directed this episode, um, this moment where Mia slams down her phone and she's pointing her finger at Chip. And I remember shooting that as the start of an emotional arc and sitting in the room, putting that together between takes and Mark Duplass just sort of sitting in the room with me. Um, because in that scene, Mia's emotions had to be right under the surface, but not come out. And so between scenes, I would let the emotions come out and then 
put them back under again. And Mark would just sit there with me and, and just, you know, are you okay? You know, he, or not say anything. I mean, this was kind of the way that we took care of each other. I know that Greta, you had a kind of a relationship with Billy because a lot of your scenes were with him and um, where you guys sort of bonded between scenes and uh, mm -hmm. as humans and, you know, as actors. And so it, it, it was really those quiet moments where you got to know people, fellow actors in, uh, in different ways, in, in family ways. And um, because of what we had seen, what we were going through, uh, we only ha really had each other. I mean, we yeah. really were quarantined uh, for the benefit of keeping everybody healthy and telling the story. So. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, you know, as much as I love this show, I have to be honest, I would love to have a behind the scenes documentary now. <laughs> I would love to, I would love to feel like I was on set with you all. So many good things are coming out of today's conversation. I thank you all for your time today. Listen, season two was like a, it was a movie on its own. Let me tell you. It really was. Oh my God. Jill Monroe, YouTube Stiletto Jill. Um, great to talk to both of you ladies. So since we've covered sort of the multitude of ways that were dissected as far as storylines for both Stella and Mia this season, should season three come about what direction or where do you want to see them individually and collectively go as far as the show in general? The crickets. I know, crickets. Right. I don't well, know. you know, <laughs> we'll be right back. But I, <laughs> here's the thing. It's like we, the way that we, the way that this, I mean, in terms of our desires, it's, it's what we're saying that this show is never going to be the Stella Mia show. It's not. And we are comfortable. It's healthy to acknowledge that, that this is not, this is not a platform in the fullest extent for us. Um, but the caveat is there's a way to keep moving in a certain direction that honors, you know, fully fleshed out characters, fully fleshed out narrative arcs. There's a way to do that within the context of a large monster behemoth ensemble show with A-list incredible talent. Um, yeah, but it's that dance. So I think like specifically, I think we are as curious as y'all to see how they handle that. I mean, that's the truth of it. And they know that too. It's an open dialogue of so what is, how do we, how do we proceed? I mean, it, it's a, it's a workplace drama. So that means there's an endless, infinite amount of, of drama and chaos that can be conjured up and fit inside of a, a season. But, you know, I think to have Mia and Stella in these positions of power, I mean, we're just they're like, it's like the chip, we, there's so much more to explore basically. Um, we, we just got the, a glimpse of what that is like, what, what it's like to be at, at a workplace that is, you know, fundamentally, I mean, white, right? And so there's, there's a lot more to uncover. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I got to do that same thing, which is I don't know. I absolutely don't know. I think that, that Greta's right, though. There are, there are a, a chasms of, of emotional uh, spaces that you can navigate in Greta's character and in Mia's character that we did not uh, have the opportunity to see in the season two and would love to see those moments open up um, for both of them individually. You know, I think there's a lot of uh, humanity in examining women who are put in these power positions and they are just struggling just as regular people, not as women of color. Just what, what does that look like for them? And that would be interesting. Um, but again, you know, the, the culture of the show is such that there are so many people in the story to tell. Um, and again, the story is, you know, there are these two extraordinary actresses at the, at the who lead the, this series. And, um, 
you know, by the way, they're fantastic people and actresses and we want to see what they're up to as well. So, you know, I think part of the collaborative effort is to make room for everybody's ideas and stories, but to tell a great story nonetheless, do you know? Um, and I agree with Greta in that like, you don't have to be out front. You just want to tell a great story for, for your character and her relationship and how it weaves in and out of the story. Um, so uh, I do, the, shorter, but the shorter answer is I don't know. And I'll be interested to see what they come up for season three. Thank you both. Amazing. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this season in your book. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Dana Abercrombie, The Coalition. Um, thank you so much for speaking with us. This show is beyond amazing. And one of the things that stood out for me for this season for Greta was the character of Stella and having to deal with the Asian hate in the episode where Yanko is attacking the man in the street who's basically hurling slurs at you. Um, I, but you, and in the end, Stella ends up kind of having to discipline him for, that, for his actions. Can you talk about adding that layer of bringing in the, the Asian hate of what is really going on in the world and having that dynamic where even though he was standing up for Stella, you still had to discipline him for his actions? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I have to be honest and, and just say that that was really uncomfortable and hard for me. The decision to include that into this piece was one that was not simple. And um, I, uh, while, I mean, so much of my experience on the show, it is meta in a way. I mean, given historically the uh, socioeconomic position that Asian, in Asian Americans specifically, our status where we are in relation to, uh, you know, whites, black communities, Latinx. I mean, this is all stuff, things that I was actively reconciling with personally. I mean, they're, to be honest, like that's, I was reading books like Minor Feelings and, and trying to figure out, um, uh, just to reach like a higher understanding of my community um, and the uncomfortable truths too of my community. And there was something to my joining this show. I mean, honestly, as crazy as it is that reflected, okay, so I'm a new character on the show. I'm Asian, right? And there's a certain responsibility that I have to hold in terms of being that face. But what is my position in relation then coming into the show to my white colleagues, to my other colleagues who are also people of color, you know? And I mean, it, it just was, it was, it was meta in that way. And that extends to the portrayal of the incident um, where I felt like, well, if we're gonna be honest about this time and in the way that Karen and, and uh, Deshaun were being honest about what was happening in their communities, it would be a lie not to include it. So that for me, as much as I, I was so worried and that's the tax that we as uh, uh, people of color have in this entertainment world, how to, the responsibility of, are we showing it the right way? Is this like, are we milking it in like a bad way? Are we being honest? How are we, all of those things that we have to think about. Um, I had to just believe that it was gonna be worth it. The discomfort, the possibility of being wrong too. I mean, how scary that is. It was still going to be worth it, that risk to show that part, even though it was small, it was a small incident. And, and I think in terms of like how Stella responded then, I mean, both with Yanko and deciding to fire him anyways, and also with Daniel um, and telling Daniel, you don't have the it factor. These things actually, though they may be controversial for me, I was relieved to see that they were after nuance in terms of these issues. It would have been a totally different story if, you had Stella say, okay, I wanna see change. I wanna see less white faces. Daniel, yes, you know, or Yanko, okay, you're, you know, Latinx, you and I, we're best friends, but that's not how the world works. 
And it was hard and it felt scary to go that way, but I'm glad that we did. I don't know if everyone agrees, but I'm really glad that we did. And I look forward to moving more in that direction. This is my incredibly long-winded answer. Uh, I want to try me that. Greta did an extraordinary job in those moments of navigating, not just as um, an intelligent human who is trying to figure it out, but as an actor who understands all of the nuances of what the character is saying in the moment, not just this moment with Mia, where she talks about the it factor, but the moment with um, Yanko and the moment with Daniel later on in episode 10, where she's like, listen, we you know, show us we're wrong. And even in the moments where we were filming that scene, very end of the season, um, I think I felt like Greta knew in the moment that she was being the villain on behalf of this story um, and representing what all that her character was uh, going to be to the audience in that moment but committing to it on behalf of making sure that Deshaun's story, Daniel's story was told in a complete arc. And, you know, I think that's the kind of generosity that we decided we were gonna go ahead and step into sort of bravely, like Greta was talking about earlier in this conversation. You just sort of knew that you had to go ahead and jump off into the deep end in spite of your reservations, your hesitation about all that you knew might be inferred from the conversation you were proposing for our audience. You just decided I'm gonna go ahead, move forward in the strongest positive intention to do good here and hope that on the other side of it, people can see what we were aiming to do. Is that? Yes, that, thank you so much, wonderful answers. Hello ladies, this is Karan from Karanism.com. Hey, my favorite Karen, you know you're my favorite Karen because I tell you every chance I get. Um, Greta, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, I was gutted by your performances this season. They were, I've watched every episode at least three times because there were so many nuances in you stepping into our lives as journalists and into the newsroom. And it addressed so many issues, racism, sexual harassment, assault, death, avoidance, power, and, and, and sexual dynamics. But we saw both of your characters come into their own power in this season. We saw you learn when to hold them and when to fold them <laughs> without backing down. And I want to know what you learned from what you learned and how you applied it to your artistry and your work going forward. Yeah, I mean, I'll jump in and say, play, having to play Stella Bach, who is the first and only uh, president of the news division um, in the history of the network, who's also the first female and first Asian American. I mean, you know, the, uh, the enormity of those title, titles, for me as an actor and as a person, that exercise of stepping into and filling those shoes and, and working outside in, and I mean, playing her taught me lessons in terms of how to be strong, how to be a, a boss, how to be unabashedly uh, myself, how to raise my hand. Um, because we don't, we talk so much about we don't always have those models, unfortunately, as women, specifically as women of color, looking around, we're, there's not a plentiful kind of, you know, uh, the, there, there's not a lot of models of how to be that. And, and I think in playing Stella and, and, and watching Karen play Mia, I mean, it really has been informative about how to stand in your truth uh, even when people don't agree, even when people think that you're weird or wrong or too young or too other or a threat or all of those things. Um, yeah, I'd like to think that those are the lessons that I've learned from her. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely grateful, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think what um, I agree with Greta and everything she just said. Um, 
you know, it's kind of weird, that whole idea of the first, it's a first, it's, he's the first of the, you know, um, there is that extraordinary responsibility that comes along with that, you know, uh, but I think one of the things that I learned was that it's important to shed that at some point and be about the business of, of working every day. Again, it was a meta experience. Um, this show uh, is uniquely American in that way. Like I felt very American. Like I was like, this is an American drama. Couldn't do this in, 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 in the UK or, you know, this couldn't be, you know, this is definitely an American drama where you're seeing um, all of these racial tropes put prance out right in front of you. Um, and as again, behind the scenes, we were exposed to so much around race politics and, 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 um, and, and politics in general, you know, as a function of, of uh, the, the weather that we were dealing with as, as actors in the moment. I mean, it was so meta. Um, but yeah, at some point I realized uh, the whole um, idea of representation was a crock, is a racket, like it was a sham. Like I had to rid myself of it in order just to create a real human being walking around. And that's, that's just straight old work. Do you know what I mean? It's what every actor had to do on set. And um, and uh, I, can't, uh, I, can't, I can't act a black woman, I can act, a, I can be a woman, you know, I can't act race. Do you know what I mean? All I can do is show up and clearly I'm, I'm black. You can't miss it. Um, and, and just be a, uh, just create the most truthful real character that I can in the moment. And you know what, Karen, I, I've watched you grow over these years and I have watched you on stage, on screen, on just, just you you have my heart you know that I tell you every chance I get and Greta it was a pleasure to be introduced to you and your work I thank you both but Greta you made a statement earlier and you said we're just actors honey you're not just anything you're everything so thank you both extraordinary you. season I adore you thank you oh thanks <laughs> I don't even know how I'm supposed to follow that I, I have no question just, 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 just forget it Maybe we'll talk about goats. No. Yes, we go uh, back to the goats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no uh, so, so you talk about un un uncomfortable questions and, and raising your hand. I have an uncomfortable question. Where is the joy? In all, of the, in all of the people of color, there's no joy. You see other people having sex, people having uh, intimate relationships. I mean, uh, having having these moments where where they are decompressing themselves, but you do not see any of the any of the people of color having joy. Please speak to that. So why don't you come with us for our first <laughs> kickoff meeting, <laughs> Reggie? You're, we'll, I will just throw you a text and you'll come with us and say exactly what you just said. But I mean that what you're saying is it's not just. It's not just this show, it's every show in America. I mean, we are, as we witnessed, we are in the baby stages of understanding our race and our relationship to that. And, you know, to a certain extent, the industry is a reflection of that. It's like, it, we're babies. And I, the optimistic take is, I am hopeful that we will get past the initial, okay, I'm showing up, Karen showing up, Dan showing that we will be able to take the next step. And I think Karen was mentioning, I'm, it's basically a privilege to be able to show um, things that aren't specific to just our race on TV. For instance, for Stella to show, okay, well, actually, what is her home life like? Does she have a love life? What's her family like? Uh, what does she like to eat for dinner? I mean, all of these things that sometimes our colleagues, our white colleagues take for granted. That is a privilege to be able to show those stories of, of joy, as you mentioned, of, of connection or things that step outside of my struggles as an Asian American. I mean, we joke about this all the time that I don't live my life like, 
here I am with my Asian uh, laptop, lifting up my Asian hand to drink my coffee as an Asian. And we don't live like that. You know, I'm a human first. So it, 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 you're exactly right. That is the thing that we have to keep advocating for. It's not enough to have these characters show up and fight on behalf of our respective groups. It's not enough. We have to show them as people. And, and I, but I'm optimistic. I think that we, we, we started, we planted some seeds and I, I'm hopeful, you know? I, I would agree, um, you know, there are other things that other shows that we're on where we're gonna be able to show how much fun and how laughter and et cetera. Uh, I wouldn't say that the morning show goes as far as to, you know, being the kind of trauma porn that we are used to seeing our, our African-American characters, you know, immersed in, submerged in. Um, but, uh, but it was a, it was a tough season. It was an extraordinarily, um, it was a, it was a strange season, I would say. And, and, uh, um, there, there, there wasn't a lot of joy explored, but I also think that that was a function of having to really tell a, a story uh, around race and race politics. And that's cumbersome, do you know? Um, but um, I think that will probably be one of the things I take into my conversation for with the producers for season three, if we have a season three and we're all back for season three, like what, what where, where can we explore a more joyful story telling um wh wh what's our desire to bring in some humor and fun into the character um i think that's a great place to start because i i don't i don't really know um uh, entirely where to where to bring that in but um but i appreciate the question yeah. I, I, I will tell you i have a lot of joy in portraying mia jordan She's yeah we have we don't get us wrong we have a lot of fun have a good time behind yeah. the scenes <laughs> it's a it's a laugh riot <laughs> yeah, it really is <laughs> well I, I i appreciate it i will tell you right now i wouldn't want to be your characters because i don't see that joy <laughs> I, I i see the struggle the struggle is so so heavy yeah. so that's what that's why i asked the question but i really appreciate you guys answer and thank you for your performances and and, and for showing up uh, with saying that you raising that you guys are raising your hand. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Greta and Karen, thank you for being just who you are. We love this show and we love the two of you on it. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film and TV critics, thank you for your time and thank you for watching After Roundtables. Have a great day. <laughs>